Okay, maybe let's start. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to introduce uh, Charchun Bai from UC Davis uh, for today's ENLA seminar. So Charchun, he uh, is uh, one of the uh, famous people in numerical linear algebra and well known uh, for his early contributions to LAPEC uh, for our work on large scale eigenvalue problems. Mm -hmm. Linear, today nonlinear, sometimes nonlinear on the eigenvalue parameters, sometimes nonlinear on the eigenvector. I think what stands out about him in terms of uh, research is that he is really able to uh, kind of transfer concepts from linear algebra to fields like physics or quantum chemistry, and also publishes in top journals of these fields, like in Physical Review. And that, that's really a distinguished feature, I think, of his research. He also did a lot of um, contributions to the community, services to the community uh, as recognized by the SIAM uh, Fellowship. And uh, more recently, he became one of the editors in chief of ACM transactions on mathematical software. Uh, today, we will learn more about recent advances on nonlinear eigenvalue problems that are nonlinear in the eigenvector. Please go ahead. Thank you, Daniel. So it's uh, first of all, uh, thanks for the uh, organizer committees to give me these opportunities to, to, to talk about some of the uh, uh, recent works. Uh, basically, it's not my work. Basically, it's a whole group of people work. I will, you will see uh, soon of that. And uh, also thanks to everybody coming. So uh, it's, it's really wonderful opportunities to um, meet everybody and also feel sense, strong sense of communities and to see the people cleave and, uh, and others uh, uh, to, through the uh, virtual world. So the title of my talk today is I call it, uh, uh, if you think about it, uh, it's a title could be very long if you read out a full what the MEPV stands for. So, and of course, to highlight, it's nonlinear eigenvalue problems, but it's a depending eigenvector. So therefore, we just use this shorthand MEPV, V emphasize this vector, eigenvector dependency. So, uh, okay. So this is a, a joint work. It's a, in the last 10 years or so, I have been working with those people so on various different types of eigenvalue problems uh, related to this, this type of nonlinear eigen, um, eigenvalue problems. So some of them are physicists or civil engineering and like Sukuma at UC Davis and John Pasca is a, a computational physicist at the Lawrence Livermore Labs. Of course, uh, the rest of names and you can see are more in a uh, numerical uh, linear algebra community like Lin Ken Li and also uh, uh, Ding Lu. Right now, he's an assistant professor at the University of Kentucky and uh, Bart and uh, Van der Ranching and also this, uh, and younger people like Li Wang at the University of Texas. So she's more uh, focusing on optimizations and uh, data science. So uh, before I selected this title, uh, looking back, uh, this wonderful of uh, an E and L seminar and uh, in the last uh, year and a half. So they started in the spring of uh, 2020. So I'm looking at uh, there is a four talks in the past uh, talks on those, on the eigenvalue problems. And uh, if you're looking at it into the title, it's all nonlinear eigenvalue problems in one way or another. So this number one reflected in eigenvalue problems research, uh, one of the train is on the nonlinear types. The second is that all those talks of nonlinear eigenvalue problems is uh, right, uh, we call the eigenvalue problem, nonlinear with respecting to the eigenvalues, lambda, uh, if we call it here. So therefore for the rest, so I use MEP stands for this type of nonlinear eigenvalue problems. And then MEPV stands for the, the, the eigenvector. I will formally define a standard model later, okay? So for those students in the audience, so if you are interested to, to uh, get into the linear eigenvalue problems of these types, and the Stefan and uh, Francois Tichers and uh, a couple of years ago, I wrote a, a fantastic the survey article uh, in the Acta Numerica. Of course, before that, a uh, book, 
and uh, uh, both uh, Volk Melmans and uh, uh, Hanesh Bose also wrote another very popular of that. You can see the references uh, in this article. But today I'm going to follow that train of continue on the nonlinear eigenvalue problems, but it's different kinds in the sense of uh, it's, it's depend on the, non, the, the coefficients in matrix here is depend on the eigenvector you're looking for. So uh, here is a definition we, you might call the, a standard uh, nonlinear eigenvalue problems, uh, a form, a standard form, just like AX equal to lambda X, we typically call it you know, an ordinary eigenvalue problems. So you might consider this as an ordinary uh, MEPV. It's essentially, so you're looking for an uh, eigenvector, and uh, here we assume they are normalized. And also for the eigenvalue matrix, could be diagonal or could be just the square of that, such that uh, to satisfy this equation. The key, of course, here is the eigenvector, uh, the coefficients in matrix H here is depend on the eigenvector you're looking for. Okay, so this is the, the definition you might call the ordinary of uh, uh, an EPV. Of course, there are many variants of that later in the literature I'm going to uh, survey, you will see is a different form of that. So a few quick remarks. First, uh, we assume this, uh, uh, the coefficient matrix the HV here is a, we call a unitarily invariant or right unitary invariant specifically. So in other words, if you multiply this V by any of the unitary um, matrix Q and it's uh, the HV the, the same as a, uh, this is a unitary invariant. In other words, uh, essentially just uh, implies this HV is a matrix function, matrix value the function is on the K dimensional subspace of a CM or equivalent you want to call it is on the Grassmann manifolds of that. So, so by this, the of a unitary invariant, you can also define what we call a so-called uniqueness or identical solution. What this means, if you have a two of a, a solutions, V1 or V2, if they span the same subspace, and we call it, this is called the same identical solution because that's uh, of that. And uh, finally, for this lambda matrix here, and of course, the, uh, if you multiply it on the left by this V transpose, and indicating that the all the eigenvalue of that are, are real because of the uh, with the all the assumption of HV etc here, but uh, typically in practice, and uh, we are interested in finding the k largest or k smallest eigenvalue problems. <clears throat> so the uh, so when you get into a problems, you are always looking for the the model problems. The, the simplest way, like we study the eigenvalue problems of AX equal to B, we're using the typical chart diagonal matrix, like from Laplace in two, negative one, negative one, this type of motivating the whole study and looking at the structure of that. Similarly for MEPV, so you might wonder what are the model problems or where can I get started or know that? So of course, the foremost or for uh, famous the problems probably is this so-called Kongshan Hamiltonians of a uh, uh, Hamiltonians of a uh, for electronic structure, basically the so-called density function of theory inside. So here is a full extended of this uh, uh, matrices format. It's quite complicated. Okay, it includes uh, kinetic energies ironic energies and some other terms. So most important that the last term of this also most evolved involves so-called exchange uh, correlation energies across uh, uh, exchange correlation energies and so on. So, but if, uh, fortunately back to about, uh, you know, long ago, this uh, uh, Chao Yang and Wei Guo and Huang Mesa, and they looking into this province and uh, Build up this, uh, we, you might consider the simplest of this uh, Hamiltonian of, of this format. And L here is just a discrete Laplacian. You can do 1D, 2D, or 3Ds. And then this afterwards, so this is a alpha is a parameter there, which is a controlled the linear tape, but this term is nonlinear. And the rule V here is defined in this vector, 
Okay, so this is a density, it's the so-called charge density or density matrix involved there. So, so, so basically you can think about, so this problem is probably the simplest uh, sort of a physical model you can think about uh, for studying this types of that. Of course, the, one of the key question is here is the alpha parameters of, of that, which we control the nonlinearity of that. Because if alpha equal to zero, that's just the simplest symmetric uh, of, uh, of Laplace in eigenvalue problems of that. So this is very well studied. Uh, it's a huge uh, field. And uh, so um, I got into this uh, essentially started from this uh, very complex models and feel very sort of um, overwhelming in terms of that. But of course, if you're looking at it, if you want to study this topic from these equations, you find that it's very interesting. You can write down on the papers and the studies, think about these problems right away. I think that's a, a, of that. Of course, this is a, a probably, as I already say, the most well-known of that. But less well-known of problems, in fact, arising from many other type of uh, disciplines or problems. Here it's another one you might, I will also call another model problems. I will propose two model problems that uh, previously this is the first one. I will using them throughout my talk. And uh, this is the second one. It's called a choice ratio uh, optimization problems. And uh, it's coming from this linear discriminant analysis for dimensional reduction. For, uh, so for the time being, I'm not getting into uh, full details uh, of that. Uh, but nevertheless, the, the, the mathematical problems here is very well defined. So you have uh, uh, two matrices. It's uh, typically uh, defined as a so-called between and within the cluster of the data. So you have a uh, of, uh, of uh, data and uh, you're collecting them from the different two groups and uh, then you formulate this so-called scattered matrix. And then the, of, of your, what you're looking for is that uh, it's a, an orthogonal matrix V here. And then the, so you might call it uh, the projection or whatever that terms you call it. And then take the choice of that ratio. So the objective is try to minimizing this ratio or maximizing. So try to separate it then as much as you could. So in this case, is this is a, a now today we call the choice ratio optimization problems. Of course, you can view this as just the optimization on the sort of manifolds. So you can straight go after the using the optimization techniques to solve them. But alternatively, you can think it was discovery about the uh, by um, it's been known in one way or another, but uh, formally in a, note, a notes by the uh, Lei Hong Zhang published in 19, uh, 2015, it's specifically proved that the global maximizer of this uh, choice ratio is equivalent to solve this MEP problems. And here the HV matrices here is defined by the, those coefficient matrix and also choice ratio and a lambda here corresponding to K largest eigenvalue problems and so on. So therefore this is exactly established uh, a connection between the, of this trace ratio optimization to the, this nonlinear eigenvalue problems of that. So this problem is being, I call it well known is that it's been studied a long times. So this paper I cited here, although they did not using this approach through the MEPB approach, they are more using another so-called fractional programming later transform to of this so-called uh, of a zero a function uh, using the Dinkenbacher the techniques. But uh, nevertheless, it's make this problems quite a well known in our numerical linear algebra communities. And uh, later um, in the last couple of years, so that's uh, quite a bit of effort to using the MEPB of, uh, of uh, approach to solve this, I will talk about the benefit of this uh, soon. But uh, the, the key is that uh, there's uh, quite a bit of research uh, later move on. One is that uh, you will naturally think if I have more than such a trace terms, and then we call the sum of this uh, trace ratios and how we should handle them. And uh, um, they continue wrote a couple of papers on that. And uh, the most recently on the, um, and so-called machine learning communities, and they extending 
Over here, we are using the standard so-called Euclidean distance. And, but if you're using this so-called optimum transport distance, also called a Westein's um, distance, uh, was a stein the distance and then become a so-called westerns the discriminant analysis so all those basically later on all formulated some sort of a nonlinear eigenvalue problems of these types of course hv here is a uh, uh, quite a uh, could be quite evolved or even need a, another layer of iteration to construct it. so this is the second model province the uh, the third model province, it's a little bit of uh, that, and uh, Bart and uh, Ding Lu and I has a close look at a few years ago. Essentially, is that we try to looking at the so-called robustness of that. So if we, you're just looking at this term here, if A and B are constants, and it's just a standard so-called rating caution of format. But now in the reality for different applications, we cite it here. And this A, B matrices may depend on the certain parameters. So therefore you have this min max province that you want to looking at a worst case scenario of this, uh, of this. But later we can show that if we, under the certain assumption of this uh, certain case, it can be transformed of a uh, uh, trace, uh, the really caution types of this form, but uh, now the coefficient matrix of here is well depend on this is vector Z you're looking for. Of course, without surprising later, you can show this is also can be transformed this to this types of the uh, nonlinear eigenvalue problems. So here it's a cartoon picture to just show you of a, of a, uh, a benefit or you might call the importance of taking to the uh, robustness. Because you can assume there's a two cluster of the data here and this is a, a circulate black dot is one set of data and a plus is another. And then you want to build a classifier based on these so-called support vector machines. And they also call the eigenvector classifiers. And if you think about each data exactly of just a single data, so this will be the dashed line classifier you will get. In other words, you can think about that everything is on the one direction is another class and other. Is uh, uh, to identify the class of this data. But of course, if you take into the uncertainty of data, and then this is a solid line of classify, and then you will get, of course, as clearly you see the solid line using that as a, this for this data, the uh, classify, it will be much, make much more sense than this dash line. Similarly, this is another class. But anyway, so this paper uh, we have uh, published. Uh, already a few years ago on the CISC, if you're interested. So, so those are just uh, three as detailed examples. So if you're wondering or interested to say, we are you know, uh, more of this. Here is just my incomplete, incomplete collection. It's just published in the last two years. So I list here is 2020 and 2021. You just find that this type of nonlinear eigenvalue problems and raising the from all sort of places. For example, procrastic problems, it's a well-known of a, a nonlinear, uh, uh, the matrix computation problems. And as this is a form of, it can turn into a nonlinear eigenvector problems. Or latest in uh, electronic uh, data science, uh, this uh, um, of that, uh, you know. And anyway, so a lot of optimization and so on. So using the, of a, one of the famous Chinese proverbs is called the Yu Ho Chun Sen. It's basically just that you just seem look like a, like a bamboo shoots after spring rain. It's seed in, in all over the places. And also, I think this is really reflected sort of my personal belief too in the is exchange between our numerical linear algebra community and the people who consume and using the new numerical linear algebra. Um, I remember back to almost 30 years ago now when we were um, developing, working on LAPAC and we tried to develop a certain tool. One of the strong belief is that in the sense of if you build it, they will come. In a certain sense, this is exactly this, the, the application and uh, uh, people in data science, et cetera, need a such tool. And if we should have developing such tool and make them come. And this is a, wonderful of, of uh, um, 
things to see uh, happening. <clears throat> okay, all right. So this is uh, my uh, uh, in my code introduction. So now for the rest, as I promised, so I will give you some uh, of, of previews or glimpse uh, in the development of, of, of uh, in this type of eigenvalue problems happening in a, mostly in the last couple of years. So I roughly organize in terms of just a very quick on theory. Oh, uh, before I move on, so I'm wondering, is there any question, Daniel? Uh, no questions so far, as far as okay. I know. All right, thank you. All right, so let me continue. So for the rest, uh, I will uh, give you uh, some glimpse on the theory and on the algorithms. And also particularly focusing on one particular algorithm is called a self-consistent field iteration, SCF for short. And then I will go, uh, if the times are long, I will dig into two uh, application in little details. And finally, I make some uh, concluding remarks. All right, so what's the theory we can know about this type of, of that? Of course, for most uh, we will care about is whether the existence or uniqueness of the solutions. So of course, the uniqueness is defined in, uh, uh, I, I mentioned that earlier. So here is a uh, of, of, uh, of results and we uh, published about uh, in 2018 in uh, CIMAX. So essentially, you say if your coefficient matrix is a Lipschitz continuous, or the subject, you know, given this uh, uh, Lipschitz constants, and also you assume this uh, matrix is the for this any of this V, if you're looking at it for eigenvalues of between the K and the K next has a gap, has this universal, or there's an existing constants, positive constants, and such that this. That, then you can prove this type of nonlinear eigenvalue problems has a unique solution. Okay, so sorry, this is one should not be there. So this is a, a in a certain sense, uh, it's not a surprising as I already said. The first assumption is indicating that this is some Lipschitz continuous. The second assumption, physicists also have been using it for a long time, and analysis by Eric Kansas and etc back to almost 20 years ago now, is also called a uniform way of posterness. And of course, the, 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 the theta here is just our familiar, the so-called principal angles between these two subspace. So in other words, uh, uh, um, what I wanted to say is uh, uh, in a certain sense, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's clear just by these two assumptions, you can know this type of nonlinear eigenvalue problem has a unique solution. But of course, the reality to verify these two of assumptions are not that trivial. But uh, uh, could be also simplified because of this. Here is an example uh, which illustrating the, for this uh, discrete Kumshan equation. Although there is a quite a different turns here, started with an applying for kinetic energy to the lot to the last turn for exchange correlation energy, so all could be very involved. Particular, this exchange correlation energy is a matrices there, etc. It turned out if you apply the previous theory, it's really just these turns of exchange correlation. If you can show it is Lipschitz continuous, and of course if the physicals. Um, of a assumption will guarantee a second assumption of universal uh, way of postness. And you can show indeed that this, uh, this complex uh, of, uh, of uh, a Kongshan MEP indeed have a unique solutions. So I think this is uh, basically, you can just uh, of, uh, illustrating that as the application of this. Of course, similarly, uh, for the earlier the trace ratio optimization problems, you can using the similar argument to uh, make the case for its uh, existence of solutions, etc. So this is uh, probably the uh, first theory theoretical results I wanted to mention. And uh, so for the time being, uh, here are two other types of the uh, theoretical uh, results uh, people are working on already published. One is so-called uh, doing a perturbation analysis for such type of uh, uh, nonlinear eigenvalue problems. The other is trying to generalizing this uh, penal the theory of 
to this type of that. Because practically in a lot of data science, HV here are the non-negative matrix. So therefore you are interested in such type of a panel floppiness type of theory of that. So Antoine Gauti and, uh, had a talk and uh, on the so uh, on the same applied linear algebra on these topics, and uh, they also has a quite a uh, big long article just recently published uh, in the uh, uh, on the archive. So this one seven. So this is the one on on these types of the uh, theory. <clears throat> okay, so this is the theory. Not much so far you can say, but nevertheless, uh, it's a. Uh, I think it's a quite a strong results and uh, <clears throat> indicating that all uh, these problems of uh, approachability from theoretical perspective. So the next, uh, uh, let's talk about the algorithm. So this algorithm. Of course, uh, probably the most famous algorithm, also I call the gateway method, is similar just like the powers method to linear eigenvalue problems, is the so-called self-consistent field iteration, SCF. So in what do you do is very straightforward. In this matrices HV here, you just uh, substitute uh, starting within the initial guess, and then you compute this coefficient matrix with the initial guess, and then you're looking for the eigenvectors and eigenvalues and just to solve the standard linear eigenvalue problems and it just keep looping, okay, keep doing that, all of that. So this method is, uh, I think it's coming from physicists uh, of that. Uh, it's proposed the literature we digging back as early as 1950s, this type of problems already have been investigated and people already proposing this method. Uh, of that. Another way you can think is some sort of form of fixed point iteration, et cetera. So this is a, I call it a, of a gateway method. And uh, if you want to study the, this MEPV, and probably you will, this is the first method uh, you will uh, start a uh, use. And later, of course, it will also the focus of our uh, in the analysis of the method to understanding the behavior of this. Uh, method, but I will talk about the algorithm analysis in my next uh, part. So here is uh, uh, illustrating when you apply the SCF to this uh, um, uh, um, to this model problems. As I say, this is the first model, simple model problems. Of course, the only uh, parameters here is uh, is this alpha. So for simplicity, I just uh, using the one D Laplacian one negative one two on the diagonal negative one and the negative one on the sub-diagonal symmetric. So you try the different alpha. So this uh, uh, of this, this is alpha 0 0.05, alpha 0 0.07, and so on. So you're just looking at the other MEP of this, and of course you compute it as uh, residuals. So you will find that when the alpha is small, in this case a uh, 0.05, the SCF will converging very rapidly. But when the alpha getting the larger and the larger, you might call the stronger and strong uh, nonlinearity, as you can see, SCF is converging is very slow. And in particular at the 0 0.9, and uh, so this basically SCF does not converge at all. So it's that. So this uh, numerical observation and also some analysis uh, is back to the of this uh, uh, by Chao Yang, et cetera. So they published the Una in Symex. So they basically proposed, the, uh, they did some analysis, but the results uh, to, to the alpha. So, so, so in other words, you basically you want to predict that your analysis should have predicted for what type of alpha or in what land range and the SCF will be converging or will be diverging. But uh, uh, within that analysis, it's a very pessimistic analysis. So therefore, they basically proposed uh, not very well-known open problems, but a, but a kind of, a, um, if you look into that, essentially, they already proposed uh, how to find an optimal estimation of the SCF, the contraction rate with respect to alpha. So this has been also sort of as a benchmark 
of, uh, of for the uh, its convergence analysis to try to go after find such kind of optimal estimation. But I will come back to this uh, later, okay? So of course, in the reality, the SCF uh, interpretation is quite a complex. And uh, typically they are sits in the middle of a big loop for bigger energy uh, sort of, sort of uh, electronic structure uh, calculations. And uh, uh, so you typically sits inside of inner loop. So, and also the convergence behavior, it's not going to be as straightforward as you saw earlier. And you will be see this type of jigsaw phenomena and also this so-called uh, potential uh, uh, the uh, charge density matrices also convergence are much more zigzag. So how to properly to control these phenomena and, uh, and uh, to, uh, to make the properly the stopping criteria of that is quite evolved. And uh, in a computational physicist, often they also using the terms such as iterative diagonalizations or linear eigenvalue problems with the evolving matrices to us uh, representing the terms of SCF. So um, now quite a years back, we published uh, uh, one of such uh, uh, treatment uh, dealing with such a zigzag convergence phenomena uh, in journal of computational physics. All right, so, uh, so one of the things uh, uh, you always ask, uh, what's the benefit? So we, we typically for many of this type of problem, you already have the techniques. Why do you want to convert it to nonlinear eigenvalue problems of this form? Why you want to use SCF of that? So I think here it's a very simple example. And then you can um, sort of convince yourself this is probably a pays off uh, to do this. So let's looking at a second model problem is the so-called trace ratio problems. As I already mentioned, the associated eigenvalue problem, nonlinear eigenvalue problem is of this form. So now you have a, a typical uh, three techniques you can approach it with them. One is uh, you we use it heuristically because essentially this is actually a very early approach. You might call it before 2010. People just are converting this to a, uh, approximately through this eigenvalue problem, because if you think about it, the numerator turns, if you put it then just the inverse of it in the numerator. So you're using uh, uh, approximating the uh, solution for this trace ratio, it will become you computing the um, largest eigenvectors of this matrices. So you can using this as your solution. Of course, uh, the, uh, the second method is that uh, you can just uh, solve this on the Grassmann manifold directly. There's a quite a bit of technique these days for optimization on the manifold matrix and matrix on the um, on matrix manifold optimization techniques, etc. So there is a package called a trust uh, a man opt. So we're using this to solve that directly. Of course, the third is that using the approach because uh, you can solve these problems. Uh, nonlinear eigenvalue problems, just use plan as CF and try to do this. So here it's a uh, uh, result. So again, this is a toy problems. Any students interested in doing this can be basically uh, implementing and play around right away. So this is uh, uh, the solution qualities for um, you. Basically, there's a three clusters of data. So when you're doing an LDA, you hopefully there you preserve their clustering. But if you use uh, using approximately uh, solutions as a method, we call the heuristic LDA. As you can see, it's just a failed to separate the, the, uh, the original data, the three cluster. But if you directly solve this by optimizations or by using MEP, you essentially got a identical solutions. So in other words, this considered as a good quality solution. But if you're looking at the cost, so we know that linear eigenvalue problems essentially is quite a scalable, okay? So within the matrix, the, the, uh, the data dimension grows and uh, the, the linear eigen solvers and are co considered as a very stable. So this is a red line here. And this blue lines here, if you are using the man ops, this package to solve this optimization problems directly, but of course, the green lines of this 
is using the MEPB solutions plus SCF. So clearly demonstrated. So we have a quite a bit benefit and of converting this province to MEPV and then using the SCF on, because that's basically a linear solver of that. Uh, so, uh, so, and uh, recently uh, we also, of course, uh, around within the other, many other work, it's, uh, we started also looking at the further uh, details of SCF, one direction is about convergence, but uh, most recently, uh, Ding Lu and I, um, Ding mostly, and I had a talk at the time on uh, applied linear algebra back to May, and our paper is still hopefully finishing soon. We started looking at uh, particular types or class types of the uh, nonlinear eigenvalue problem. So in this case, is a particular, this form is H, is a, depend on the eigen, single eigenvector you're looking for. Is a, is a function is in other words in such it's not a linear but it's nevertheless it's still a final in a final form N namely is that you have a constant uh, coefficient here but uh, the uh, each of this coefficient is a function and uh, it's a linear combination of that this function involves some sort of really caution types of that so and it turned out is that you are interested for try to find this largest eigenvalues and eigenvectors for this matrices. Okay, so this is a, a you might call the of that. Uh, this is a class of that. And uh, of course, uh, given the strong structures here of this many eigenvalue problems, we can indeed have a very uh, quick solution for this. We can demonstrate that this SCF converging is always converging to one of the eigenvectors of this province. But the key is this form of uh, nonlinear eigenvalue problem. It uh, turned out uh, arising uh, from uh, a very large class of the problem. Most uh, notably is this called a quadric programming. I will talk about uh, um, uh, optimization problems. I will talk about them may, uh, later. But the other way of a lot of numerical linear algebra problems, such as uh, computing the uh, uh, numerical radius of a matrix, that's a very classical linear algebra or numerical linear algebra problems. Or most recently, uh, the work by Christian and uh, Mayer and uh, uh, Volk, Melman, et cetera, uh, on the, in terms of so-called uh, for this uh, dispatic Hamiltonian system, they try to computing the distance to non-singularity. And this also later on turned into uh, such type of nonlinear eigenvalue problems. And then, <clears throat> So, so, but I want to mention this is in fact is that there is a very interesting geometry interpretations for the SCF. In other words, SCF is not a just a sort of a simple fixed point type of interpretation. And uh, so, what gets us excited is that is the some very uh, cute, or you might call it interesting, underlying what's the SCF do in terms of geometry. So. Uh, so first is that here is uh, uh, what I would say. Um, it, first is that this nonlinear eigenvalue problems, of course, within this form has you might call a variational form or variational characteristics. Essentially, is associated within this. You have a function of objective functions, but uh, you try to optimizing over this so-called joint numerical range of here. Okay, so this is defined. If you have a um, that in the st standard uh, one matrices, it's just a one turns here. Or if you have a complex matrix, you can turn it into a real, um, real part and an imaginary part or smart Hermitian part, anti Hermitian part, and form this so called uh, joint numerical range. And then you try to optimize in, in terms of this. So this is a, called a optimization over joint numerical range. And all those problems I mentioned earlier, arising from the numerical radius, et cetera, you can all propose the in this, written in this form, okay? So now if you apply the SCF, SCF to solve this uh, of that, so you generate this SCF sequence, X, you started with X0, X1, X2, and so on. And then, so what they do, 
So in fact, is that it's a process that we call a joint uh, to, to generate this so-called supporting the high plane, and etc. So this is a sentence here, but quite involved. But let's see the picture; it's probably much more clear. So what the SCF does is essentially you start. So this is a, a pictures of that. The shaded region is the uh, this uh, numerical range, joint numerical range. And then the uh, this uh, each of y here is just variables, or we wrote it as a rule of uh, vectors. And then you start it within the initial, and then you build the contour curve. And it just any optimization you search around the gradient direction. Okay, so try to find a maximum, and then you get to the x one, the iterations. At the x one, it turned out is that it's formed this supporting the hyperplane within this normal direction. This normal direction is just previously this gradient direction, and then from the x one, you go to the next to x two, and then you repeat the same thing. This is normal uh, direct uh, gradient direction become a uh, gradient direction. This dashed line become a normal direction, and then you have a new gradient direction, and so on. So in other words, uh, for uh, this uh, SCF process, uh, essentially it's just uh, moving around this so-called uh, this of a, a, a numerical a joint numerical range, and uh, you're looking for the point until uh, when the so-called gradient direction with normal direction overlap. In this uh, illustrating, when these things happen. And then you had a convergence of SCF. Okay, I think this is a. Um, you might say, you know, what's the use of that? Uh, so far, uh, we are still uh, looking into that. But nevertheless, it's a very, very interesting interpretations for to understanding the SCF process uh, uh, in terms of geometry of that. Of course, uh, within this particular. Nonlinear eigenvalue problems. Of that, uh, uh, you can develop in the, of uh, uh, solvers to speed up the so called uh, uh, convergence, etc. So I will come back to that uh, towards the later. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, of a uh, of course uh, beyond the SCF and uh, types of method. So there is a uh, uh, quite a, over the years. As you can see, the power method or inverse iterations, and also has been uh, developed over the years. And more recently, Elias and Jalabrin and his collaborator, Carl Milbergen and others, and has looked into quite a different other techniques of that to solve this uh, nonlinear eigenvalue problems. Okay, so uh, maybe I take a, a pause to see any questions, Daniel. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, Cleve has a question or wants to point out a connection. So, Cleve, I'm going to unmute you. I hope this works. So you can speak up by yourself. Hello, Cleve. Hi, hi. Nice, very nice talk. Mm -hmm. What about the ordinary differential equation? X dot equals AX. X depends upon T, but the matrix A also depends upon X. Yes. Yeah, this is a, 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 a this is a people have this uh, papers on that. I yes, you can turn it into this type of that. They in, in fact this uh, uh, not a x. You can call it like a sine x x dot plus sine x equal you know lambda. You're looking for equal to zero. That's a, this type of a problem. In, in engineering, et cetera, working on that. The, 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 the Lorentz chaos equations can be written in this form. Uh, A is three by three. Yeah. Anyway, that's a sort of off the subject here. Thanks. OK, definitely. Uh, i follow up on that to show you the uh, related references. OK. Uh, I, I do have a question. Uh, so, what about preconditioning, uh, like for the uh, what you mentioned, optimization of on this Stephen manifold? It's probably not a good idea if you look at yeah. a particle Laplacian. 
Well, I have ideas to precondition, to change the geometry, uh, also maybe in relation to what you talked about uh, in your joint work with Ding Lu. Yeah, so uh, maybe my last applications, we tried to uh, illustrating if within this uh, inside observation, et cetera, so how you can modify the SCF to accelerate the convergence. So maybe back then I can come back to this preconditioning issues again. Okay, and uh, there's a question by Jim Demmer. Hello, Jim. Hi, how are you? Very good, very yeah. nice talk. Yeah, so, we are on the time zone. <laughs> Only halfway, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> So, so when you solve a linear eigenvalue problem and you ask for, you know, dimension one, of course, that's a subset of the answer for dimension two, right? They're yeah. all nested. Yeah. Is the same thing true in the nonlinear case? Uh, yes, also. Uh, yeah, is there is a, in fact, uh, in my concluding statement, I will talk about uh, the study of this type of nonlinear eigenvalue problem, how to raising uh, quite a bit of new issue regarding the linear eigen solver itself. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Yes, that, that's uh, that's with with uh, why you saw in a reality the convergence behavior of CF is not a, all nice. It's always jigsaw, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, next, uh, as I already mentioned, thanks. Uh, uh, that's all, Daniel. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm I'm only has ten minutes. I will try to rush through the my. So of course, the, the, as already uh, indicating the SCF, just like a, the power method. So every people, you know, study the numerical linear algebra, understanding the power method, what's the convergence method of, of uh, behavior look like, you know. Uh, but of course, you deserve to know if you are using the SCF as a power method, what's the convergence behavior of that? It turned out it's very complex. So here is a, a list of the publication. Uh, I just uh, uh, show you here is all this done regarding the understanding the convergence of such SCF procedure. As obviously, as you can see, it uh, has a quite extended uh, converged, uh, uh, analysis. Some of them from the uh, um, PDE angles, because the underlying the Kongshan electronic structure calculation, et cetera. But most recently, in the last few years, and it's all from the numerical linear algebra of uh, angles to looking at understanding of this type of behaviors of that. So I wanted to report a, 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 so a behavior of uh, some uh, analysis results regarding the SCF of that. So let me skip the uh, global convergence because it's, uh, it's pretty much a, a, the same results as we prove the existence of the solution. But more interested is about a local convergence behavior because as you can see uh, of that procedure. So first is of course, uh, you can looking at SCF as a sequence on this grasp manifold. And then you can define this uh, contraction factor. Okay, this is different uh, so-called local contract, just looking at one step or you're looking at a geometry uh, convergence factor over, over the M steps. And of course you can also take the limits so those are the all standard uh, classical matrix iterative analysis studied in a book like by Varga, Richard Varga, et cetera. So now if we make a, a little simple assumption, we assume this uh, coefficient matrix is differentiable and also you have a uniform the gap and also you pick a particular of uh, a distance metric on this uh, Grassmann manifold. It's just for the presentation of that. Then it turned out is that you can an understanding the convergence of this through this so-called tangent matrix. Basically, you're looking at the your current iteration and within a solution in terms of tangent angle. So this is a slightly uh, different, uh, it's same motivation, but uh, it's a slightly different route compared to commonly we used uh, uh, in matrix perturbation theory of using sine angle, you know, um, studied by Vavo, Cajon, et cetera. But it, in this setting, we find that it's a more simplified and prefer using this so-called tangent angle. So within a tangent angle, you can show 
between the two steps of SCF, one is called a V, one is called a V hat, and this so-called tangent matrix or angles can be represented by a linear operator. Okay, so this linear operator, there of course you can define the spectral radius and also define using the norms of that. Then you can strictly prove this spectral radius, of course, less than this operator norms. And without surprising, then you can conclude it. If the spectral radius is strictly less than one, then SCF will be converging. If larger than one, it will be diverging. Of course, if it equals one, then whatever this things could happen, just like a classical of that. So this analysis of that, uh, it's a, we think it's a quite a nice extension of the classical matrix iteration we have seen them. And also uh, there's a unifying quite a, a few analysis you have seen them. But what's the, what's the uh, results of that? As I showed you earlier, let's go back to the, this model problems again. And um, this looking at alpha, we already see this uh, for different alpha, the convergence behavior very different uh, from very fast converging to very slow or non-convergence, et cetera. So, uh, so over the years, there's a quite a different analysis. So I uh, using this, uh, uh, this line here is a, 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 a break a square of this dash square line, uh, at least that we consider as the best estimates um, up to the 2018. This is the convergence behavior of that. As you can see at a 0 0.6, this is a, a dash of uh, blue lines. So it's already predicted the SCF is going to be divergent. But in the reality, in observed or in our estimate, as you can see, it still should be very well behavior in terms of converging. And if you further push the alpha towards the of that, really is around 0.8.5, and then you started this so-called divergence of this. So here is the our specifically for this we call a critical point. So observe the convergence is zero point nine nine, and this uh, our estimated this quantity of a sympathetical contraction rate we constructed estimated almost accurate to seven significant digit, and of course uh, uh, this uh, uh, using the norm of that is slightly larger reflected the difference between the, these two reflected this is non-normal matrices, just like a non-normality. If your matrix is highly non-normal, we do expect a, a big gap between our spectrum radius and uh, non-normality. And of course, previously, as I say, it's just going to be immediately much more worse. So from this, I basically want to say, uh, we had a quite a good understanding what's the behavior of SCF of that. If you are interested of such analysis and how we're going to impact to the convergence to this model province trace ratio or to a more complex so-called grossman Petrovsky equations, um, you can looking at the literature of that. Okay, so I have a two minutes, uh, five, three minutes or so. I'm going to touch the briefly touch two applications. So one is application for this so-called uh, chronic uh, correlation analysis. It's another classical uh, data province. This is, uh, as you can see, this is trying to minimizing, the, uh, maximizing the trace ratio of that and subject that to this normality. So that has been a way uh, in, in standard uh, textbook like a global balance, et cetera, you can find that. We all know this is a, have a closed form solution through the SVD. And more recently, they also have been proved with respecting optimal solutions. This is always positive and so on. But a few years ago, um, people think this is a, a, a SC, a, the CCA, the community correlation analysis to find such X is suboptimal. So what's the ideal situation is for data visualizations and uh, dimensional reduction, et cetera. And uh, you can uh, sort of try to looking for the X is directly looking for orthogonal. So therefore this CCA, the format is become this, seemingly more evolved, okay? So because you are looking for the orthogonal 
matrices X1, X2, such that minimizing this of uh, ratios of that. It turned out that this problems can be reformulated into the kernel is doing such type of a trace ratio. It's the different, it's, as you can see, the square of this here. But nevertheless, all this can be converted to nonlinear eigenvalue problems. And of course, I can uh, turn out to using SCF. And also given this particular form and some very minor assumptions, you can do the so-called SCF uh, is prove the convergence. So furthermore is a, a standard classical um, canonical correlation analysis is found that only it's, we call the two view of a, a data. But if you have a multiple views and you will evolve the optimization task like this, but of course you can correspondingly using the trick I saw earlier. But here is the uh, payoff. And uh, so if you're using the suboptimal, this using the SVD, of that, the accuracy the, uh, of that uh, in terms of classification is decreasing the, even you added the more sampling data or more of a, a projection subspace. But uh, of course, with the other two, you see the substantial uh, higher accuracy. This uh, uh, black line is the new method that we proposed. As you can see, this is uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, improvement in terms of accuracy compared to previously approach. But more important is the timing, okay? So this blue line using the SVD, again, we see the scalability in this setting here. And, uh, but uh, using uh, this uh, optimization, directly optimization, as you can see, is uh, increasing substantially, is order of magnitude increase. But nevertheless, using our, the SVD, using the linear algebra underlying the linear eigen solvers, and we can preserve the, uh, the cost. So the next uh, is also uh, back to the earlier of uh, Daniel also asking this question, consider preconditioning or modified SCF. So here I'm using this uh, of this uh, tensor approximation, the three, uh, the, it's a very special tensor. Of course, that's a class of the tensor has a different names of that. So essentially looking for the uh, rank one tensor, a best tensor approximation, of course, um, we do have a version the you can use higher dimensional, but we assume this tensor is partially symmetric. Then this optimization problems is later turned out to this so-called aquatic maximization over the Euclidean the, uh, ball is a very classical optimization problems within this form. So without surprising, you can go through the um, algebra and the calculation, it will turn it into the nonlinear eigenvalue problems within this form. Of course, within this form, now you can do the SCF. Within that, we can preserve the negativity. Uh, first, you can observe that the, S, the standard SCF just uh, is an, another version, recover this so-called alternating least square, which is a very classical techniques for lower rank tensor approximation. And also we can preserve the negativity in practical. And uh, here is uh, one of the open problems. It's also delayed uh, part finishing of that paper is uh, numerically we have already observed the convergence to the global optimum, but I try to prove them, et cetera, is pretty hard. And here's just a quick example to illustrating uh, this is a, a, a data set. This stays a variable online using this Facebook between the user interface, how they evolved into this period of about 20 months and about 60,000 uh, of users. And if you solve this problem using the plan SCF, also our um, alternating least square, it takes about this 40 iterations and about two seconds. But now using SCF, because we are uh, having this inside of this structure, so we do the updating, basically doing the SCF, our uh, really caution types of the, uh, we call it acceleration scheme, we can reduce the number of iteration um, by the, you know, not quite a bit, but of course the overall, the each iteration cost more. So overall, we just uh, speed up by about a factor of two. But anyway, so we hopefully uh, to have this report published soon. <clears throat> so here it's the uh, remarks. So, so first, uh, as I say, uh, this type of problem in physical sciences, uh, it's very well studied, such as the Kongshan equations, 
our gross Pitaski equations in both condensed metaphysics, et cetera. But it's much less explored in uh, the type of uh, problems arising from the other applications, such as the data science that I tried to illustrate in a number of places. I think the two things require to understand the pretty solid now right now in terms of existence of uniqueness under this assumption. We do have a good understanding of the convergence of uh, plan SCF. And uh, the one thing I have not talked about is uh, what's the impact uh, of this uh, uh, nonlinear eigenvalue problems to our linear eigen solver, this such as the ill conditioning problems in the middle of steps. And also this, uh, in uh, some cases, there's a, a particular in electronic structure calculation, et cetera, they require a large number of eigenvalue eigenvector. And uh, the, of course, I anticipated the future work is uh, mostly is on the how to understand in, the, in, in reality, probably people were using some more mixture of uh, SCF. So what's the impact of this extended or mixture? And finally, of course, the certainly there is a tremendous opportunity uh, for this new eigen solver. So there's a quite a bit of materials uh, in this. So um, my collaborator, Ding Lu, right now is at the University of Kentucky. So he's building a, a repository to put a, basically my talk as a subset. He has a much more other data. So hopefully as a provider service to our community who are interested in looking into such type of nonlinear eigenvalue problems. So that's all. I apologize for the uh, extended time. Thanks a lot for the great talk. Uh, we already have one question by Ilsa and I. Uh, Hello, Ilsa. Just a second. Hi, uh, yes. bye, bye. That was a great talk. I just have a minor. Yeah. When you define the tangent, right? Uh, for the canonical angles, your iterate has to be close enough to the solution for the tangent to be defined, right? Uh, can you repeat it again? Well, you yeah. have the tangent of the canonical angles. For that to be defined, that iterate V has to be close enough to the solution V star, yeah. oh. V star right? Exactly. Because we're doing a local analysis, we make assumption this is a, a negativity. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. So there's a caveat. <laughs> there's always a lot of assumptions uh, for, the, for the talk that I try to do. So this paper is going to be appear in the sign next soon. Okay, uh, and I think Mark Emprey has a follow-up question. Hello, Mark. Hi, thanks thank for the beautiful you, talk. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Following up a bit on, on Ilsa's question, um, yeah. with the, the NEP problem, of course, one of the famous challenges is that you can have eigenvectors associated with distinct eigenvalues being linearly dependent. Is yes. that a challenge in this convergence theory here? Do you have to make some uh, assumptions about, about having a, a basis of, you know, having no linearly dependent eigenvectors amongst the subspace, you know, the eigenvalues you're looking for? I think because of these two assumptions here, uh, basically the, the Lipschitz uh, and also this uniform gap, and also the, our solution consider as really a subspace. So it's, it's, it's this seems, at least the right now has not serviced as a critical issue. Does this uh, issue of uh, eigenvector dependence arise at all in these Kahn-Sham problems, or, or or maybe that's not an issue here for physical reasons, for example? Uh, for physical reasons, seems they never worry. Like uh, even yeah. this type of result presented to them, they are not surprised. They say we know yeah. always. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I know I I've been very inspired by your uh, talk uh, earlier on that. Uh, so for this, in terms of theoretically you might say we know very little, particularly in terms of, uh, of, uh, of uh, where you, the pole separation of gap, et cetera. The... Well, I think we can all agree that it's hard to surprise the physicists, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's certainly. So that's why, as I say, so maybe we should look in turn on our uh, side, looking for the application from the other uh, things. But fortunately, as you can see, this uh, just uh, my incomplete collection in the last uh, two years, of that, uh, we have lots of other interesting applications for this, yeah. from the data science, from the, you know, uh, all sort of angles. Yeah, that's very exciting. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, uh, since that there's no further, oh yeah, okay. Bye. Let me just, there's one 
Should I should I quit to stop sharing? No, no, no. Wait a minute. Uh, there's one more question. Uh, like it? Yes. Yeah. Hi. So actually, it's um, not a question, but a kind of a comment on the previous question. So yes. since the NEPV depends linearly on the eigenvalue itself, so the situation of one eigenvector uh, sharing many eigenvalues does not occur in general in this problem. So um, in, the, in the NEP, the, the lambda itself is nonlinear, right? So that's why you have yeah. yeah. That's all I wanted to say. OK, thanks. Yeah. Uh, okay, there doesn't seem to be any uh, further question. Um, I, I don't think you need to unshare your slide because I, I don't have any slide. Uh, I just would like to announce that the next uh, ENLA, ENLA seminar, and that's the last one for this year, is by Ivan Osiridets uh, from Skoltech in exactly two weeks. Okay, thanks everyone for joining and see yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you everyone for joining.